In this lecture, we will discuss synthesis of aldehydes and ketones. Based on the products obtained, these methods can be categorized into three classes. Synthetic methods, which give both aldehydes and ketones. Synthetic methods, which give only aldehydes. Synthetic methods, which give only ketones. We will first discuss methods which give both aldehydes and ketones. The first method is aldehydes and ketones by oxidation of alcohols. Secondary alcohols on oxidation give ketones. Primary alcohols on oxidation give aldehyde, which on further oxidation give carboxylic acid. Tertiary alcohols do not undergo oxidation. Consider as an example the secondary alcohol on oxidation give ketone, which normally doesn't undergo further oxidation. Likewise, this primary alcohol on oxidation give aldehyde, which can be oxidized to carboxylic acid. Tertiary alcohol do not undergo oxidation. Secondary alcohols only have one proton at the alpha position, so they can only be oxidized once, forming a ketone. Generally speaking, the ketone is not further oxidized. Though for an exception, special oxidizing agents oxidize ketone into ester. Primary alcohol has two protons at the alpha position, the carbon atom bearing the hydroxyl group. As a result, primary alcohols can be oxidized twice. The first oxidation produces an aldehyde, which has one hydrogen still attached and then undergoes oxidation to produce a carboxylic acid. Tertiary alcohols do not have any protons at the alpha position, and as a result, they generally do not undergo oxidation. A large number of reagents are available for oxidizing primary and secondary alcohols. The most common oxidizing reagent is chromic acid, H2CrO4, which can be formed either from chromium trioxide, CrO3, or from sodium dichromate, Na2Cr2O7, in aqueous acidic solution. The mechanism of oxidation with chromic acid has two main steps. The first step involves formation of a chromate ester. The second step is an E2 process to form a carbon-oxygen pi bond, rather than a carbon-carbon pi bond. In the elimination, the carbonyl carbon retains its oxygen atom but loses its hydrogen and gains the second bond to oxygen. During the process chromium-6 is reduced to chromium-4. The chromium-4 species formed reacts further to give the stable reduced form, chromium-3. Both sodium dichromate and chromic acid are orange, but chromic ion, Cr3+, is a deep blue. One can follow the progress of a chromic acid oxidation by observing the color change from orange through various shades of green to a greenish blue. In fact, the color change observed with chromic acid can be used as a test for the presence of an oxidizable alcohol. When a primary alcohol is oxidized with chromic acid, a carboxylic acid is obtained. It is generally difficult to control the reaction to produce the aldehyde. The overoxidation of aldehyde in the presence of strong oxidizing agent gives carboxylic acid. In order to produce aldehydes from primary alcohols, mild oxidizing reagents other than chromic acid or bleach NaOCl, must be used. Two such mild oxidizing agents using chromium-6 as oxidant are pyridinium chlorochromate, PCC, and pyridinium dichromate, PDC. 
both used in dichloromethane solvent. PCC is formed from the reaction between pyridine, chromium trioxide, and hydrochloric acid. PDC is formed from the reaction between chromium trioxide and pyridine. In the presence of these mild reagents, primary alcohol is oxidized to aldehydes and not further oxidized to carboxylic acid. For example, this primary alcohol on treatment with PCC or PDC gives aldehyde which doesn't undergo further oxidation to carboxylic acid. Whereas the same alcohol on treatment with chromic acid or bleach gives carboxylic acid. These mild oxidizing agents can be used with acid-sensitive alcohols also. For example, this alcohol containing an unsaturation on treatment with PCC or PDC oxidizes the alcohol group into aldehyde group. The acid-sensitive alkene is retained. Similarly, this allylic alcohol on treatment with PDC changes hydroxylic group into aldehyde group without affecting alkene double bond. Consider this alcohol. In the presence of PDC, the secondary hydroxyl group is oxidized into ketone. The primary hydroxyl group is oxidized into aldehyde. In the presence of chromic acid oxidation, the secondary hydroxyl group is oxidized into keto group. The primary hydroxyl group is oxidized into carboxylic group. This is due to overoxidation of primary alcohol. Chromium based oxidations produced by products including chromium salts that are hazardous and require special disposal. To address this issue, two alternative oxidation methods, Swern oxidation and Des Martin oxidation, have been used, which are more green than chromium based oxidation methods. The Swern oxidation uses dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO and oxalyl chloride in triethylamine. The Desmartin oxidation uses Desmartin periodinane, DMP, in dichloromethane. In the presence of DMSO and oxalyl chloride, this primary alcohol oxidizes into aldehyde. Much like the Swern oxidation, DMP-based oxidation will also convert primary alcohol into aldehyde. The structure of Desmartin periodinane is like this. Both these reagents employ non acidic conditions and are achieved at room temperature. These features offer advantages over chromium based oxidations, which require acidic conditions and high temperature. The second synthetic method is aldehydes and ketones from acid chlorides and esters. Let us discuss synthesis of aldehydes first. As we have seen, aldehydes on oxidation give carboxylic acids. Therefore, theoretically, carboxylic acids on reduction should give aldehydes. However, aldehydes tend to be more reactive than acids. Therefore, reducing agents that are strong enough to reduce acids also reduce aldehydes to primary alcohols even faster. Thus, in order to reduce carboxylic acids into aldehydes, carboxylic acids must be first converted into a functional group that is easier to reduce than aldehyde, so that aldehyde will not be reduced to primary alcohols. Acid derivatives like acid chlorides, esters, nitriles can be used. Strong reducing agents like lithium aluminium hydride reduce acids and these derivatives all the way to primary alcohols. Therefore, one must use mild reducing agents like the derivatives of aluminium hydride that are less reactive than lithium aluminium hydride. One such mild reducing reagent is lithium tritertiary butoxy aluminum hydride, whose structure is given here. 
This is derived from LAH, wherein three hydrogens of LAH are replaced by three tertiary butoxy groups. The only one hydrogen, compared to four in LAH, surrounded by bulky butoxy groups, makes it mild in nature. Another mild reagent is diisobutyl aluminum hydride, derived from ALH3 by replacing two hydrogens with isobutyl groups. It is abbreviated as I, Bu2, ALH or more commonly as Dibol H. Lithium tritertiary butoxy aluminum hydride reacts faster with acid chlorides than with aldehydes. Reduction of acid chlorides with lithium tritertiary butoxy aluminum hydride gives good yields of aldehydes. This acid chloride is reduced by lithium tritertiary butoxy aluminum hydride into aldehyde, which is not further reduced due to mild nature of the reagent. Likewise, this acid chloride is reduced by lithium tritertiary butoxy aluminum hydride into aldehyde, whereas the same is reduced by lithium aluminum hydride, LAH, all the way to the primary alcohol. Disobutyl aluminum hydride, Dibol H, reduces esters directly to aldehydes at dry ice temperature, about minus 78 degrees Celsius. The initial reaction forms an aluminium complex that is stable towards further reduction, but hydrolyzes to the aldehyde in the aqueous workup. For example, this ester in the presence of Dibol H first forms the aluminum complex, which hydrolyzes into the aldehyde. Similarly, this ester, in the presence of Dibol H, followed by hydrolysis, forms this aldehyde. Now the synthesis of ketones. Grignard and organolithium reagents add R negative to acid chlorides, where a hydride reagent would add H negative. These add to acid chlorides to give ketones, and then again to the ketones to give tertiary alcohols. Consider this acid chloride, the addition of Grignard reagent forms this ketone. To this, another molecule of Grignard reagent adds quickly to form magnesium salt of tertiary alkoxide. To stop at the ketone stage, a weaker organometallic reagent is needed, one that reacts faster with acid chlorides than with ketones. Lithium dialkylcuprates and other organocuprates react with acid chlorides to give good yields of a wide variety of ketones. For example, when this acid chloride is treated with lithium dialkylcuprate, also called as Gilman's reagent, it forms this ketone. The lithium dialkylcuprate is formed by the reaction of two equivalents of the corresponding organolithium reagent with cuprous iodide. For example, when this alkyl chloride is treated with lithium and copper iodide, Gilman's reagent is formed, which then adds to this acid chloride and forms this ketone with 80% yield. Similarly, this acid chloride on treatment with this lithium dialkylcuprate forms this ketone. Another method is synthesis of aldehydes and ketones from nitriles. Nitriles are the compounds containing the cyano, C triple bond N, functional group. Since nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, the C triple bond N is polarized like the C double bond O of the carbonyl group. Nucleophiles can add to the C triple bond N by attacking the electrophilic carbon atom. A Grignard or organolithium reagent attacks a nitrile to give the magnesium salt of an imine. Acidic hydrolysis of this imine leads to the ketone. Consider for example this polarized nitrile. The alkyl group from Grignard reagent is added on the electrophilic carbon atom to form the magnesium salt of the imine which upon hydrolysis forms the ketone. Remember that, 
Ketone is not attacked by Grignard reagent here because it is formed during the hydrolysis after any excess Grignard reagent has been destroyed. This benzonitrile, upon treatment with Grignard reagent, phenylmagnesium bromide, leads to the formation of this imine salt. The imine salt upon hydrolysis forms imine, which is hydrolyzed to benzophenone. Dibol H can reduce nitriles to the corresponding aldehydes. Take this nitrile, in the presence of Dibol H, hydride anion is added to the electrophilic carbon of nitrile, so as to form the aluminum complex of imine, which upon hydrolysis forms the aldehyde. This nitrile with an unsaturation in the carbon chain, upon treatment with Dibol H, followed by hydrolysis, gives this aldehyde, without affecting the carbon-carbon double bond. The fourth synthetic method is aldehydes and ketones by ozonolysis of alkenes. Ozonolysis of the alkenes, followed by mild reduction, cleaves the carbon-carbon double bond to give the corresponding aldehydes and ketones. Consider this alkene, upon treatment with ozone, it forms mole ozonide. This is then subjected to mild reducing agents like dimethyl sulfide or zinc to give the corresponding aldehydes and ketones. Consider this one methyl cyclohexene. Upon ozonolysis followed by reduction with dimethyl sulfide, it forms 6 oxoheptanol. The shortcut here is to break the carbon-carbon double bond and restore the carbon-oxygen double bond on both carbons. The double-bonded carbon having at least one hydrogen is oxidized to aldehyde group, whereas the one having no hydrogen attached is changed into keto group. Consider this alkene, trans-2-butene. The products of ozonolysis followed by reduction can be written by breaking the carbon-carbon double bond and restoring the carbon-oxygen double bond on both the carbons. Therefore, two acetaldehyde molecules are formed. Similarly, the products of ozonolysis of this cyclic diene can be written by breaking both the carbon-carbon double bonds and restoring carbon-oxygen double bonds on all the four carbons. Same trick can be applied on this alkene. That is, break the carbon-carbon double bond and restore carbon-oxygen double bond. Thus both alkene carbons, having one hydrogen attached to each, are oxidized into aldehydes. The fifth method of synthesizing aldehydes and ketones is from dithions. Dithions are compounds containing a dithion moiety, which is composed of a cyclohexane core structure, wherein two methylene units are replaced by sulfur centers. Based on the position of sulfur, this is called 1,3-dithion. This can be prepared by treating formaldehyde with 1,3-propane dithiol in the presence of a Bronsted or a Lewis acid catalyst. This carbonyl carbon of formaldehyde is electrophilic. And these hydrogens directly attached to carbonyl carbon are not acidic. Whereas the hydrogens of this dithion are acidic. Therefore, upon treatment with a strong base, such as alkyl lithium or sodamide, the acidic hydrogen can be abstracted to form a carbanion like this. This carbon is now nucleophilic, which means the polarity of carbon is reversed. This inversion of polarity is called umpolon. Upon treatment with primary alkyl halide, this carbanion can be alkylated. The alkylated dithion can then be hydrolyzed in the presence of mercuric chloride to form aldehyde. Or it may be treated with another molecule of base, alkyl lithium, which abstracts the second acidic hydrogen to form the carbanion. This carbanion can then be treated with another molecule of same or different alkyl halide, preferably primary, 
to form dialkylated dithion. This can be hydrolyzed in the presence of HGCl2 to give ketone. Thus both aldehydes and ketones can be obtained from dithions. Another synthetic method for phenyl ketones and aldehydes is via friedel crafts acylation. friedel crafts acylation is an excellent method for making alkyl aryl ketones or diaryl ketones. For example, when this acid chloride is treated with a benzene or activated benzene in the presence of aluminum chloride, the acyl group is added on the benzene at para or ortho position with respect to group G. The R can be alkyl or aryl, whereas group G can be H or an activating group or halogen. This para nitrobenzoyl chloride, upon treatment with benzene in the presence of aluminum chloride, forms paranitrobenzophenone in 90% yield. The Gatterman-Cox synthesis is a modification of the friedel crafts acylation, in which carbon monoxide and HCl generate an intermediate that reacts like formyl chloride. For example, toluene on treatment with carbon monoxide and HCl in the presence of aluminum chloride undergoes formulation at para position to form paramethyl benzaldehyde. Like friedel crafts reaction, the Gatterman-Koch formulation succeeds only with benzene and activated benzene derivatives. Another synthetic method for aldehydes and ketones is by hydration of alkynes. First we'll discuss acid-catalyzed hydration of alkynes. Hydration of terminal alkynes catalyzed by a combination of sulfuric acid and mercuric ion, results in the Markovnikov hydration to form an enol, which quickly totemizes to its keto form. This forms methyl ketone. Likewise, internal alkynes can also be hydrated under the same conditions, but this will form mixture of ketones. Remember that, Acid-catalyzed hydration of terminal alkynes adds hydroxyl on more substituted end and hydrogen on less substituted end, that means Markovnikov's hydration, which gives methyl ketones as product. Another way of hydrating alkynes is by hydroboration oxidation. For example, hydroboration of this terminal alkyne with diacetylborane followed by oxidation with hydrogen peroxide gives anti-Markovnikov addition of water across the triple bond to form an enol, which quickly totemizes to an aldehyde. Thus acid-catalyzed hydration of this terminal alkyne in the presence of mercuric ion forms methyl ketone whereas hydroboration oxidation of the same forms an aldehyde. Another synthetic method is for ketones from carboxylic acids. Organolithium reagents can be used to synthesize ketones from carboxylic acids. Organolithiums are so reactive toward carbonyls that they attack the lithium salts of carboxylate anions to give dianions. Protonation of the dianion forms the hydrate of a ketone, which quickly loses water to give the ketone. If the organolithium reagent is inexpensive, we can simply add two equivalents to the carboxylic acid. The first equivalent generates the carboxylate salt, and the second attacks the carbonyl group to form the dianion. Subsequent protonation gives the hydrate of the ketone which loses water molecule to form ketone.